you doing? My name is John Del Terrio. I'm from Lawrence Harbor, New Jersey. Uh, I took about an hour and a half ride up here to Bear Mountain um, with my uh, 1971 Chevelle. It's a tribute car to the SS model. I just purchased the car back in February. Uh, it has a small block in it now, uh, soon to be a uh, big block 454. Uh, hopefully if uh, Santa Claus is good to me this year. And uh, I did some odds and ends on it, changing the wheels and tires, had to put a top on it, uh, did some material work. And uh, I just tried to get to as many car shows as I can. I heard this was a big one up here, and it looks like a really big turnout. My name is Pat Sharkey. Uh, 59 years old. I bought this car when I was 26 years old, right out of a uh, few years of working after college. I got it as just a, uh, a toy and was able to uh, hold on to it uh, even after raising my kids, putting it away for many years. So after it sat for about 15 years, I re-restored it. Uh, I was came up, my youngest son came up with the concept of covering it in this liquid rubber called Plasti Dip, which saved me a lot of money, and now the car gets a lot of comparisons to the Road Warrior, the Batmobile. So after we did that, we decided to take it up another notch, and having the name of Sharky and always being known as the Shark, I decided to put the Shark. This is a, uh, a graphics artist was able to do it, it's just like a big sticker. Okay, we restored it, we did the interior, personalized it more. Uh, got our little model here to match. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it. I've had it now 27 years and uh, having more fun with it now than I've ever had in the past. I've been coming to the Bear Mountain shows uh, since uh, probably back in the 80s when I first had the car. But then, uh, due to work and um, limited resources back then, uh, the car sat, and uh, now we're back. Uh, I've had this re-restored for about three years now. And I just love coming up here. Uh, I remember coming up here when I was a kid, when I first moved to a new city uh, with my parents. I remember the ski slopes. Uh, I'm an old guy, so uh, I have fond memories of Bear Mountain and still come up just to walk around, see the zoo, bring my kids up here, just like my parents did when I was young. Hi, my name is Pelly and I live in Amon, New York, and I'm showing off my 1967 Silver Shadow two-door coupe. Very rare, they only made 200 left-hand drives. I bought this car in Atlantic City from a guy that used to work in a casino, and one of the clients there sold it to him. I don't know if he went broke or something, but uh, that's the story. So anyway, this car was uh, repainted and completely restored about 15 years ago. Beautiful car, as you see. Two door, not many of them made at all. Drives like a Rolls Royce. Okay, well, my name is Peter Shindo. I'm from New Jersey. And a lot of cars out here are spending tons of money on chrome. Well, I decided to spend tons of money on orchids. Now, because it's a car show, a lot of the guns didn't make it tonight, but on specialty shows, I do have uh, propane firing guns. And I have signs on the front that says simulation fire, because if I don't, people will be hitting the ground when I hit the trigger. Uh, the first thing I want to show you, it's a 1987 era. Uh, came out of uh, Camp Lejeune somewhere. I'm the second owner. And it looked nothing like this when I got it. No doors, one seat, no roof, green. And over the four, four and a half, five years, I went to a number of different military swap meets from Florida to, to Maine. And you'll probably find one item that you can buy, maybe one door next door. And over the last four or five years, everything you see is accumulation of many, many shows. Everything works, except the guns. The guns are Hollywood style. They, they shoot propane gas and no ammo, no projectile, so it's very safe. Uh, and I have two, 150 cal in the front, 150 cal in the back. This used to be a slant back, took the back off, and I now have two 50 cals, which gives it a totally different look at the shows. The, you have 16 smoke grenade launchers on the roof. And that's 
to lay down smoke all over, you know, in front of you to the side of you, protect yourself from the enemy. The uh, spotlight used to be an arc lamp. It was a very hot, very bright. I changed that out to just a regular uh, uh, headlight lamp because I didn't want anybody burning themselves when on the roof. Most of the people like to sit on the roof and uh, have a ball during parades. Most of the towns, uh, it's Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day, and it's basically three or four days a year that this makes 11 to 15 different parades. Let's go and move in the back and I'll show you something here. All right, now what's not on the vehicle at the moment that's located on the roof is a tow missile launcher. And that is a rocket. This is what the round is stored in, so it gives you an idea how large the rocket is. And that one rocket, it's called a tow, and you have a mile of, uh, of distance because when that rocket fires, there's a spool of wire that goes like, like a fishing line and you steer it to wherever you, you want it to go on that wire. So it's a, it's a steer by wire type of a device called a tow missile. In the back, there's an AT-4 anti-tank weapon. And that was the old World War II bazooka that uh, that people used to carry around and weigh like, I don't know, 80 pounds, all steel. Well, that's all fiber. And you fire the rocket, one time use, you take it, smash it up against the tree so the enemy can't use it, and off you go. And I was lucky enough to, to find that uh, at a show. It's demilled, but it's on display and it works very well. The M4s, those again are props, they're Hollywood props, they don't fire but they're painted up to look real and give it some realism uh, to the vehicle. Here's the pedestal that I was telling you about before. There's a gunner shield, looks like a letter T. The person would stand up, 50 cal, and now we'd be swiveling left and right and so on, et cetera. Let's take a look on the inside. The radios are, are uh, Vietnam era. I'm not allowed to have the, the latest Singar radios that the Humvees have today. So I'm using the, uh, uh, the six meter band uh, with, the, uh, with these radios. I had to get a ham license to be legal so I can transmit. And uh, the large radio is a transceiver so it can transmit and receive. And the small radio on the right is just a receiver so that the ground the ground crew is on one frequency and somebody else is on a different frequency, so this could act as a repeating station. The device in the middle is an infrared scope. The red caps come off, you slide it over to either the driver or the passenger. I have headsets and he'll be telling me where to drive without any lights on because I have infrared lights in the front. It's a green hue in the picture but again, total darkness, I can drive the vehicle very safely. So I have the intercom. What's also not on display is the computer. I found the original mount in Texas, had to repair it, weld it up, and I found a 1992 Panasonic Toughbook, which was the early computer that was used uh, in, in the vehicle. These are the smoke grenade, the grenades themselves. They're dummies, of course, but they're on display. But these are the real ammo boxes. They weigh something like 75 pounds each. And I had to use a lot of steel and bracing to, to prop them up like that. And, oh, the last device is a, it's kind of complicated, but it was, it was used, it was the very early GPS and you had the coordinates on maps and this would tell you the coordinate where you are and you would look it up on the map and so on. Real analog stuff before the digital uh, came out. So, and that's operational and all I use it now for is uh, the altitude of where I am because it does read out the altitude.